Today, I'm gonna share with y'all my response and the response I believe believers should have to the recent Joe Rogan comments. Let's get it. My name is Jermaine and thank y'all for joining us on That Christian Fam. If growing in the faith is important to you, hit that subscribe button because over here we like to encourage, empower, and give you everyday practical Christian advice on real life situations. We drop videos whenever we drop videos. So hit that notification bell because for the first hour, we respond to comments immediately. All right, y'all, and real quick, listen, hit that like button. I'm gonna tell you why. Because it don't cost you nothing, but it means the world to us as Christian content creators, all right? It helps to push the video up the algorithm, tells people you like the video, and it just helps out the channel in general. All right, y'all, let's jump right into it. Recently, we have seen some clips of Joe Rogan saying some highly controversial things, all right? For one, he talked about how uh, he was at a movie theater or whatever, and he talked about the Planet of the Apes, and then he also talked about black people and how he has a problem with them referring to themselves as black. But let me go ahead and roll one of the clips for y'all. And there's another clip that I have to address. There's a clip from 11 years ago. I was telling a story in the podcast about how me and my friend Tommy and his girlfriend, we got really high, we were in Philadelphia, and we went to go see Planet of the Apes. And we didn't know where we were going. We just got dropped off by a cab and we got dropped off in this all black neighborhood. And I was trying to make the story entertaining. And I said, we got out and it was like we were in Africa. It's like we were in Planet of the Apes. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes, but it sure fucking sounded like that. And I immediately afterwards said, that's a racist thing to say. I deleted that whole podcast, but obviously somebody made a clip out of it. One of the things I want to point out right from the jump about that clip is that he said he was high. And one of the things I know about high and drunk people is this, they don't lie. There's three people who don't lie, drunks, kids, and angry folk. Substitute drunks for high folk. Now, the reason we say this is because the filter has been removed. With kids, there is no filter. With angry people, they say what's in their heart. With drunk people or high people, they say what's in their hearts, all right? That's in them, you can't escape that. You can come back and apologize for it, but it's in there, or at least it was in there at this time when he said this 12 years ago. Hopefully that's changed. Which leads me to something else I need to say. People can change, people do change, people do grow and evolve. Understand this, this was 12 years ago. I would hate for somebody to take a timestamp of me 12 years ago and say that that's what I am or that's who I am in 2022. Think about where you were five, 10, 15 years ago. Was it a dark place or was it a godly place? Was it evil or was it good? People have slip ups and that's even in the public eye. One slip up, cool. Now, if it happens again, I ain't gonna start no Joe Rogan campaign. I just simply ain't gonna fool with the dude. Jesus said something that a lot of us out there are frustrated with and downright wish he did not say. Walk with me to Matthew 18 verses 21 and 22. It says, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Some translations say 70 times seven or whatever. What that number represents is an infinite number. That means there's no number on the amount of times you're to forgive your brother or your sister. I didn't write it, blame the Holy Ghost. Let me give you an example. Say for instance, somebody goes to prison for embezzlement. They get out, we forgive them. All right, we, we, we welcome them into the church, but we will be foolish to make them a trustee. Is that judgment? Yes, but it's also wise. Be wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. Do I think Joe Rogan is a racist? No. Are there some things that maybe need to be unpacked and explored with somebody who is a licensed professional? Yeah. What bothers me or gets under my skin even more than this is a clip I'm about to show y'all where Joe Rogan is talking to Jordan Peterson about how 
it's confusing how black people call themselves black. What did Michael Prejudice. Eric Dyson call you? Uh, An mean, mean, angry and white mean, man? Yeah, and, and a mean, angry white man. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not mean at all. Yeah, yeah. That's what's dumb about that statement. It's you're not mean at all. It's, uh, I am white. Actually, that's a lie, too. <laughs> I'm kind of tan. And he was actually not black. You're tan, he was what sort the of. F- am I? Because I'm, I'm darker than you. Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But neither of us are white. Well, I'm Italian. And mostly. he was brown, not black. Well, isn't that weird? Yeah, it's this, really the, weird. The black and white thing is so strange yeah, because like the shades are tan so... Tan and brown. There's such a spectrum of shades of people. Unless you're talking to someone who is like... 100% African from the darkest place where they're not wearing any clothes all day and they've developed all that melanin to protect themselves from the sun. You know, it's, even the term black is weird. It's a, mm. it's a, it, and when you l- use it for people that are literally my color, mm. it becomes very strange. I'm not even going to get into what is black because that's a whole nother can of worms by itself. But I do want to say this. We don't go to people from India. We don't go to people from China. We don't go to people from the Middle East. We don't go to people from South America and tell them what they should call themselves. But when it comes to African Americans in this country, for some reason, we feel like we have the right the privilege to be able to tell them what they should call themselves. We've been called black people for a very long time in this country. This right here is the embodiment of privilege because you feel like you deserve a seat at the table when it comes to any conversation, and that's simply not the case. I grew up with Latinos, and by Latinos, I'm talking about Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, all right? And they considered themselves Latinos back in the 90s and in the early 2000s, right? But then I also had uh, Mexicans or people from Mexico and El Salvador who who considered themselves to be Hispanic coming up. All right, fast forward to 2022 or whatever. Now everybody calls themselves Latin X from the Caribbean Latinos all the way to the people who come here from Mexico and El Salvador. That's what they call themselves Latin X. Do I have a seat at the table when it comes to discuss what they call themselves? No. Do I have a gripe at what they call themselves or choose to identify themselves as? No. Why? Because I don't deserve a seat at the table. That's their culture. That's their conversation. I'm going to leave it right there. There's certain terms that other ethnicities can use that I can't and I'm cool with it and I wouldn't even feel right using those terms. Call it being self-aware, I call it being courteous and exercising wisdom. Now, what's very encouraging to me about Joe Rogan is it seems that he's been making a shift lately when it comes to this Jesus thing, right? When it comes to Christ because I have seen where this man has gone from being a full-blown atheist and now it seems like he's teetering on that line of being an agnostic or whatever and it seems like he's leaning closer i'm not saying he's a christian but it seems like he's leaning closer to adopting some of the ways or seeing the the uh the practicality of being a christian and hopefully my prayer is that the holy ghost moves uh on his heart and that he makes that conversion to christianity and becomes saved but let me wrap up with this One of the most frustrating things I heard in the body of Christ is this. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But yet them same rusty, dusty, raggedy behind folk are the same people who say cancel such and such over something they did or something they said. Here's a good question. Is cancel culture really something we should be practicing as believers? Is cancel culture rooted in the DNA of Christianity? Is cancel culture something you would find at the heart of God? Because I'm going to tell you something. The day is coming. Actually, it has already came where uh, this cancel culture is going to knock on the dough of Christianity, all right? And you're going to have to pick and pick a side and, and choose, okay, am I going to side with Christianity or am I going to bow down to pressure? One day personally, your Christian beliefs will be challenged, all right? And they may say, counsel you because of your Christian beliefs. My question to you is, will you be ready? I know I'm ready. You reap what you sow. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped somebody on the other side of this video. And for all the trolls or anybody else, if you offended, I really don't care. If you have not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and share it with somebody else if you can. This is Jermaine from That Christian Fam. 
That's a wrap. Mommy taught me how to follow dreams. Daddy taught me how to follow green. I taught myself how to follow things. Jesus turned around and he said, follow me, whoa. Yeah. Ain't no other way to go. He shine.